And now, the Mole Mystery Theater, presented by M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brush with shaving cream for tender skin. This is Jeffrey Barnes, welcoming you to the Mole Mystery Theater, the program that presents the best in mystery and detective fiction. Tonight's story is entitled The Rival Dummy, and its presentation is a result of the combined talents of two of the most distinguished names in the entertainment world. For it was written by the famous playwright Ben Hecht, and a very fine character actor, Walter Spazak, will play the leading role of Gabo the Great. Ralph Bell plays Bill Ferris. The rival dummy is a macabre adventure in the strange workings of an unbalanced mind. In it, we're going to meet a ventriloquist and his dummy, Jimmy. Jimmy, who might have you questioning your sanity before the final curtain falls. Oh, uh, say, Mr. Barnes, isn't a ventriloquist a person with two voices? Well, that's right there. And why? Well, uh, I was just thinking a fellow like that is lucky. He can talk over his own little problems. For instance, supposing he says... Uh, tell me, dummy, what's the best shaving cream for tough whiskers or a tender skin? Then, if he's a smart dummy, he'll answer, It's Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream. Yes, sir, man. It's smooth. So smooth. It's slick. So slick. It's a smooth, smooth, slick, slick shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tender skin. Mole is the cream that's ideal for a wiry, hard-to-cut beard or a tender skin. Because it is heavier, Mole not only softens your whiskers, it stands them up straight while your razor cuts them right off. So you shave faster, closer, easier, and you shave painlessly with Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tender skin. Mole. And now for tonight's Mole mystery, Ben Hecht's The Rival Dummy. Starring Walter Slazak. This is the story of Gabo the Great and of his friend Jimmy. Jimmy, who was a rare friend indeed. Jimmy, who would do whatever Gabo wanted, who would speak when speech was needed, and who was a good listener when a sympathetic ear was wanted. Our story opens in the backstage dressing room of a darkened theater. Joe Ferris, theatrical agent, a half-smoked Havana in his full moon face, trying to pacify police inspector Tom Crick. Now look, inspector, look, I tell you, it's a bum steer. You see any corpse around? Well, all right, there ain't been no minor, I tell you. No? Listen, Ferris, I took the call at headquarters. I heard the guy say my name is Gabo. I have just killed a man. What is it, a gag? No. Not again. And not murder? No, murder, Inspector, please. All right. And you've got some talking to do. Where's this gavel? He's, uh, he's taking a walk. Now, oh, look, Clayton, uh, I got some good scotch here. You got some time, I'll throw a good laugh in with the scotch. Huh? Yes? Come on, Clayton. Well, okay. Go ahead and talk. I'll buy it if I like the sound. Oh, good, 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 good. So sit down, Inspector. Here, here. Now, uh, look... Now, see, this Gabo is my boy. You mean you're his agent? You represent him? Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's one of the neatest ventriloquists in the business. Works with a dummy named Jimmy, see? I like Charlie McCarthy. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, sits on his knee and all that. Well, I'm looking for talent four years ago. This Gabo has just come over from Hungary, see? He's knocking the yokels in the aisle and a bar the theater. <laughs> Back horse here. That reminds me, when I went to shave this morning, I put 
Hmm. But it sells good on Broadway. So I go backstage to talk about big time to gamble. Got Jimmy the dummy propped up on a bale of hay, and I give him the pitch while he washes up. We thank you for your kind offer, Mr. Ferris. Jimmy and I have always wanted to do big time. Now, how much can you get for us? Yeah, how much, Mr. Lefaxter? Quiet, Jimmy. Try to be a gentleman. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Ferris. <laughs> sure. That's a good gag, Gavel. Yeah, you're really good. Well, uh, uh, how about a hundred a week? That's satisfactory with me. How much for Jimmy? Uh, what do you mean? I said a hundred a week for the act. Oh, that's the I'm in the act, too, ain't I? Oh, now look, Gavel, gag's a gag. You want the job or not? But Jimmy is entitled to something, Mr. Ferris. Wouldn't you make it a hundred and ten? Well, uh... <laughs> yeah, well, I've been held up lots of ways for more dope, but never by a wooden dummy, I'll tell you that. <laughs> okay, it's worth it. Be in New York on Tuesday. <laughs> So, Gabo gets to be good property, see? He goes swell on the psychic. We get so we're grossing half a grand a week and we're getting set for movies and big houses when all of a sudden this Rubina babe comes along. This happens about a year ago. We're playing a swigo. Rubina is with an acrobat act. She just barely has enough brains to hold a hoop straight for the muscle boys to jump through. And her physical equipment don't give Miss America any worries neither. But Gabo... Well, he buttonholes me after the end. Mr. Ferris, I want an assistant for my act. A woman assistant. Oh, you're nuts. I'll be a top belly now. A woman will slow it up. It's all set, Mr. Ferris. I've already arranged it with Miss Rubina. So Rubina joins the act, Inspector. From then on, it's a psychist. The act slips like a mail order facelifting job. I'm worried, see? It's a good act, and it's still out of my pocket to see the guy tossing more lines at the dame than at the dummy. The audience is given with large doses of silence. One night, I'm dodging the theater manager in the wings when I see Gabo, the dummy under his arm, chinning with Rubina behind a pot. I ain't proud. You know, Rubina, we were meant for each other. You know I'm mad about you. Yeah? Gee. I, I've been wanting to tell you. But how? He dreams about you. Yes, I dream about you. And Rubina, Rubina, say something. Tell me you you like me a little. Well, I, I don't know what to say, Gabo. Of course, I knew this was coming. I had the storm signals up a while, but I... Well, I, I don't think it would work. Why? Yeah, why? Well, that's one reason. How's a girl to know you mean it? You're always making fun of people with that darn dummy. Please, Rubina, I, I only ask you why. Listen, do you know why I love you so? No. There was a girl in Hungary, a beautiful girl I thought I loved. You are like her, but much more beautiful. Be my wife, Rubina. Oh, I don't know. I wasn't planning on... Please, I'm... Rubina, be our wife. There you go again. You can't even make love to a lady without making an act out of it. Rubina, I never met anything more sincerely in my life. I'm not making fun of you. Jimmy has nothing to do with it. He's right. Just make believe I'm not here, Angel Puss. That's all, brother. Look, Grateful. I'm working for you, see? Fifty bucks. You're an icky. The dummy's got more heart than you have. <laughs> Inspector, I got the kick and not around a minute. I think first this guy's a jerk to mess up his wolf picture with comedy. And then, as I stand there, Gabo begins to talk to the dummy, see? And it hits me. See what you did? You fool. I've taken more than I can stand from you. I love that woman, understand? You're coming between us and I won't have it. Who's coming between who? You wanted that bow-legged bow bean in the act, not me. Shut up. You slapped me, Gabo. You slapped me. Yes. And you give me an idea. Rubina and I are going to do the act without you. Take me to my room, Gabo. I never want to speak to you again. Suits me fine. My best friend trying to turn the woman I love against me. The next night I go backstage to see if I got an act left. I'm all set to come into Gabo's dressing room here when I catch the screwiest sounds. 
It's Rupina and Gabo again. Only different. I'll bet you don't even know what state we are in, Rubina. I'll bet I know what state you're in, Gabo. What state am I in, Rubina? The state of Homo, Gabo. The state of Homo, city. That's not bad, Rubina. Let's try it again. I'll hey, 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 what goes on here, Gabo? Hello, Mr. Ferris. Rubina and I are rehearsing our act. Want to hear? Your act? Are you nuts? Rubina, try to make some sense where he wants, huh? What goes on? Just what he said. Me and Gabo were rehearsing. As soon as this contract's up next week, we're going to do an act together. We're going to tell jokes and dance, and I'm going to sing. Sit. <laughs> no, 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 Gabo, Gabo, my friend. Look, you can't do this to Joe Ferris. Rubina, darling, uh, would you let me have just a few words with Gabo alone? Anything you have to say to me, Mr. Ferris, you can say before Rubina. Oh, that's all right, Gabo. I'll go, darling. Just be sure this bag of wind knows I'm a partner now. Now, Gabo, what are you and Rubina going to do in this, this gorgeous act? Hmm? Just like she said, a song and dance team. What about Jimmy? I don't need him. Besides, he's mad at me. He won't talk to me anymore. He won't... Why? He slapped my face, Mr. Ferris. You can tell him from me, I hope he chokes. He had it coming to him, Mr. Ferris. He tried to steal Rubina from me. He's jealous. Oh, now, wait, Gabo. Wait, you know, Jimmy doesn't say anything you don't make him say. You don't do anything you don't make him do. He's you. If he's mad at you, it means you're mad at you. You know, what's that, that stuff? How can you be mad at you? I'm mad at him. Now, Gabo, cut the gags. This is serious. Look, I picked you up in a wheat belt. I built you up. I made your act top billing, didn't I? Sure, Mr. Ferris. But I must think of my personal future. You should have left us in Indiana, Joe. This never would have happened. That dame is breaking up a beautiful friendship. It's your fault, Jimmy. She can't stand you. Gabo, cut it out. Can't stand me. You don't. She's playing you for a sucker. The only thing she wants is for you to put her in the act. That's a lie. Gabo, so help me out. Right, she's ruined the act already. You've ruined it. I'll tell you something else. I don't need you in the act anymore. Gabo. Mr. Ferris, let him have Rubina. I'll go alone for you. Why, he never pulled a laugh in 20 years. I'm the guy they laugh at. Gabo. The contract is over next week. After that, Jimmy, you are fired. Gabo, let me talk to you, will you, for Pete's sake? Shut up. No, you Are you, you sure I pull your blasted hat right, Jimmy? What am I saying? Did I say that? He's got me talking to him, too. <laughs> As the curtain falls on Act One of tonight's Mole mystery, Mr. Ferris tries to reason with Gabo, but discovers that he's talking to a man who is actually two different people. Quite a strange predicament, eh, Dan? Well, uh, yes and no, Mr. Barnes. I often find myself talking to a man who's thousands of different men. You know, the men with tough beards who wonder how they can get a smooth, slick shave. So I always say to them, shave with Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream. That's right, men. Mole just made the order for stubborn, hard-to-cut whiskers or a tender skin. Because Mole is heavier, it not only softens your whiskers, it stands them up straight, while your razor cuts them off close and clean. With Mole, you shave faster, closer, easier, and you shave painlessly. Try it. See if you don't say, it's smooth. So smooth. It's slick. So slick. It's a smooth, smooth, slick, slick shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tender skin. And now this is Jeffrey Barnes returning you to Act Two of Ben Hecht's The Rival Dummy, starring Walter Slezak. <laughs> Inspector, that does it for me. When I get to talking to a dummy like it's got brains, it's time for Joe Ferris to see somebody. It hits me Gabo is blowing his top. And maybe me, too. Well, one idea leads to another, and I decide to get some professional advice from a psychiatrist. Uh, it's a very interesting case, Mr. Ferris. Nothing too unusual, but in one way, it's a rare situation. 
Now, you're Mr. Debo is a schizophrenic, of course. Yeah, maybe but... so, maybe not, Doc. I'll know better if you break that word apart. Uh, well, let's put it this way. Gabo has two personalities. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know that, Doc. That's why he's a good ventriloquist. Him and Jimmy. In a way, but to understand, you've got to realize there is no Jimmy in the normal sense. There's a Jimmy, a complete individual who lives inside of Gabo. Split personality. Gabo can no more help talking as Jimmy than you can help reading. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm getting this at all, Doc. Mr. Ferris, forget about the dump. There's nothing to the dummy. An ordinary schizophrenic who isn't a ventriloquist does the same thing that Gabble does. He talks first as himself and then as someone else who thinks he is. He even changes his voice, but in Gabble's case, it's worse. Because of his gift for throwing his voice into a dummy, he sees his second self. Mr. Ferris, you have a dangerous man on your hands. <laughs> Well, Inspector, I try to get Gabo to the dock, see, but I gotta do it easy. In the meantime, I'm getting cancellations. And then comes the payoff. When Gabo goes on at 4.30, I'm catching the act in the wings. Standing beside me is a curtain man. You know, you can feel an audience. Well, Gabo is on three minutes, and there ain't a giggle in the house. Ha, ha, ha! Very funny, Jimmy. What's funny? Please, please, you're right, but don't say it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, why the lovely Rubina gives me a glass of water to drink, Jimmy will sing a song for you while I drink. I will not. Oh, yes, you will. Come now, while I drink, you sing. Jimmy, Jimmy, I said sing. What devil kind of a routine is he playing now? I don't know, first, but the heart will Jimmy, I said sing. Why did I sing? You said you didn't need me. so close to getting smeared by an audience. Gabo stumps off the stage, tosses me Jimmy with a crack about going out for some air. So I take Jimmy into the dressing room and hand him the Rubina. Remembering what the doc tells me about what's with Gabo and Jimmy, I go after him. I'm worried, see? Well, I find him in the alley. Hey, uh... Hey, Gabo, that you? Yeah. Look, Gabo, I've been a friend of yours a long time. Now... Tell me what's in you, boy. I don't care about the act. It's you. You got me worried. Did you hear him tonight, Mr. Ferris? He didn't get a laugh. He was terrible. Oh, I know, I know. You're right. Absolutely right, Gabo. Jimmy was bad, but, uh... uh... Hey, uh... Did you ever think it's maybe, uh... Maybe because he's lonely? Lonely? Why? Why, you know. You two been on the outs. Oh, I know he started, but maybe... Maybe he's sorry. Only he's got pride, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jimmy's proud. <laughs> Gabo, uh, why don't you meet him here? Huh? I don't know, Mr. Ferris. He's changed. He's not the same Jimmy anymore. I can't trust him. If you can't trust your best friend, who can you trust? Oh, you're right, Gabo. You're right. Only, uh, I don't see any reason why you and Jimmy and Rubina, too, can't get along like a big family. You think Jimmy's really sorry, Mr. Ferris? I love boy. The theater is out. It's just us left. Now, come on back to the dressing room. I bet you'll find Jimmy in there crying his little eyes out right now. Of course. So. Well, maybe I have been a little too hard on Jimmy. Maybe you're right, Mr. Ferris. Maybe we can make it up. But he'll have to apologize to Rubino. Oh, he will. He will. Now, go on in. I want to see the three of you. Hit it off when you come out. <laughs> That's Rubina. 
Please give me police headquarters. Hello. My name is Gabo. I've just killed a man. This is Jeffrey Barnes again. In just a moment, we'll bring you Act Three of... Rival dummy. Thousands of dandruff sufferers who've been ready to give up in despair after trying other methods without success have found that double dandrine gives them real relief. You see, outstanding authorities point out that a germ, Pity Rosporum ovale, is the cause of the most common kind of dandruff. Methods that simply wash away loose dandruff are ineffective because they don't destroy this germ. For real relief, it must be destroyed. And double dandrine does that. It actually kills this germ on contact. Even in many severe cases, double dandrine has given remarkable results. Now, the reason for double dandrine's amazing efficiency is a special ingredient, an active antiseptic that's used by many hospitals because of its astonishing effectiveness. In double dandrine, we call it Alzan. 
So try double dandering and see if you don't agree that it really does more than the ordinary, ineffective dandruff fighting methods that actually are no better than plain water. Get double dandering tomorrow. Your money back if not satisfied. <laughs> See, Inspector, even though this dressing room looks like a cyclone hit it, no mud, no gear. Here, here, have another. Yeah. And you let all this go on. Why did you stop it, sir? Uh huh, uh huh. You see, you see? You got feelings yourself, Inspector. Just telling you about it, you got a feeling for the dummy. Why? Because Jimmy the dummy is a real guy. Living inside a gabo and gabo did murder. Only it ain't murder. No, no, I don't stop him. I'm too scared. Yeah, that's the call I got at headquarters, eh? Yeah, that was gabo calling. Where is he now? Well, down the corridor in the Venus Vessel. Bidding a bond farewell, I suppose. Hey, did it ever occur to you this gabo might have a grudge against Rubina? <laughs> What's that? Rubina, come on. Down this way, Inspector. Right behind you. That wasn't bad, Rubina. Let's try it again. Hold it, Inspector. You know what state we're in, Rubina. I know what state you're in, Gabo. Wow. Everything's okay. I and guess. what state am I in, Rubina? In a state of coma, Gabo. In a state of coma. Oh. <laughs> the ice in their act. Ain't they the love burns out? Peek through the door here. You see? She's sitting in this lap. Yeah. Very sweet. <laughs> Good Lord. Her neck, the way it wobbles. He, he's got his hand behind her head. Like with Jimmy. Come on. Gabo! Mr. Ferris. Say, I'm glad you're here. Rubina and I have a swell act. Want to hear it? Her neck broken, Ferris. Isn't it wonderful, Mr. Ferris? Jimmy's gone. But I've got a new dummy. He's Rubina. You want to hear the act? She makes a wonderful dummy. She's taking Jimmy's place. Now that's only fair, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Gabo, sure. What a curtain. What a curtain. <laughs> This is Jeffrey Barnes inviting you to be with us next week when we present a mystery entitled Not Quite Perfect. Bert Lytell, star of stage and radio, will be with us to play the leading role. A man conceives of a crime in which he is the murderer, but not the actual killer. That is the story the Mystery Theater brings you next week. Follow the fascinating adventure of a man so clever he commits the perfect crime. So perfect it was not quite perfect. So be sure to join us next week to hear Bert Lytell in Not Quite Perfect. for the Mystery Theater is by Jack Miller. Walter Slazak appeared tonight through the courtesy of RKO Pictures, producers of the new motion picture Sinbad. The Rival Dummy was adapted for radio by Fred Mako. This is Dan Seymour saying goodnight until next Friday at the same time when the Mystery Theater presents Not Quite Perfect, starring Bert Lytell. National Broadcasting Company.